welcome everyone and welcome back to Insights at Adipec 2022, uh, where we're travelling deep into the minds of industry experts and influencers to gain insights and perspectives on challenging issues and opportunities facing the energy sector. I'm your host, Catherine Ogilvie. Um, in this episode, we will be discussing digital twins and how they can be used to unlock the power of asset data to transform major projects. Um, today's experts have lots of rich insight and solutions to share on these important questions. Um, in this episode, I'm joined by David Doherty from Wood. Um, I'm also joined by Dr. Tobias Schiller uh, from Aviva. Welcome and thank you to both of you for taking the time. Catherine. Um, can you, first of all, tell me what is a digital twin? For me, I would describe a digital twin as a database representation of an asset. That data could be how it looks in terms of its 3D layout. Mm -hmm. It could be what's going on inside the unit. Or you could simulate what's happening inside the processes. You can monitor what's happening inside the processes. There's a lot of pieces that fit under that umbrella, um, but it's really all based on data. Well, it's also so important to remember that a digital delivery by itself will not deliver a fit for purpose digital twin for the operating phase. So it's just first and instant at the beginning. So if a project team is already delivering a project digitally, so as they've done in the past, just handing over a database, but it doesn't mean to be really intelligent. So when you're talking about digital twin, there needs to be much richer, much more intelligent to be, and as well later on support operations. Mm -hmm. Great. And uh, Wood describes itself as having a life cycle view of digital twins. What, what does this mean? That's really looking at the life cycle economics of an asset. Um, so you're looking at the total expenditure or TOTEX over the whole asset life cycle, bearing in mind that you have, say, a five-year um, design process, um, but it may operate for 20, 30 years. You know, that's what it's designed for. So you're looking at the TOTEX over the whole life cycle and maybe in that initial early phase where there's more capex you're spending you know an extra dollar say on a, on a digital twin but the whole point of that is to realize um, savings of tens or hundreds of dollars in the operational phase and so from a totex point of view that capex is completely worth it mm -hmm. would you like so, to add anything to that? yes so the foundation of delivering a life cycle digital twin approach is ensuring that the right information is gathered during the project for both the project itself and operations again. So it's only generating value when you're taking the engineering data, which you have created in the engineering cycle, and we call it a digital twin, that can it handed over in operations. So it doesn't need to be the same data model at this time, but they have to be handed over to be used later on to generate additional or to get the payback for the investment. Mm -hmm. um, and how does implementing a digital twin approach to an asset help to execute major projects? So at Wood, we've gathered a wealth of experience delivering um, brownfield, greenfield, digital twins in, you know, in the energy and other sectors. Um, and really, the approach has been designed so that you're both capturing the objectives and requirements of a project, mm -hmm. you're um, fitting that in with the, um, with the kind of um, strategic objectives of the client, as well as the digital strategy that they're looking for. Um, we feel, in terms of the life cycle, um, you really need to not just be setting up your digital twin um, to be useful for what we know now. You need to set it up for what future technologies are going to be there in the future that we don't even know about right now, but we need to make sure it's ready for that. Hmm. Um, how important is it to transform businesses and maintain digital twins in order to create real lasting value? Perhaps, Toby, as you could okay, add good. this one. So to create a lasting value, that's actually what customers want. We need to ensure that the project and operations teams actually use the digital twin and adopt it as part of their day-to-day -day work. So it has to become something they own, so they feel comfortable in using with and not being something which is put on them to execute, but really where they're feeling comfortable. So we need to be sure that the surrounding business processes require and support this. So at the moment, when you're talking digital twin, you have existing work processes, but you need to look when you have that technology, what of the business processes do you need to adjust? So that this is one of the key important when you're setting up that project, so to port this. So in considering the asset life cycle in total, you need to think then as well, how does that get handed over into operations? Keeping in mind, at engineering, you're setting the foundation. 
project. Mm -hmm. uh, and as I said, you have five years for the project, 50 years plus to live with the asset. So therefore, you need to make sure that at the beginning, you're making sure that all the items which you later on people in operations need to use them are taken into consideration. Would you like to add to that, David? Yeah, um, and I think Tobias kind of touched on this in one of his earlier questions, but it's really considering the asset life cycle as a continuum rather than a series of discrete phases um, is really the key to unlocking lasting value in using the digital twin. It's, it will need continuous investment to maintain because um, technology changes, the asset itself changes, um, but it's really, it's only natural that asset owners want to be able to demonstrate the value in digital twin um, by doing that process and really takes us back to the, the start of the life cycle phases. Um, what do we want to achieve from a digital twin? And let's make sure that we're doing all the right pieces we know about now in the early phases to achieve that. Oh, great. Um, how can we make, or can we make, I should say, future assets digital native from inception? So by applying the right to left thinking approach um, that Wood has for the digital twin, um, we can really bring what we want from the operating phase back into that early um, setup. And there's much that can be achieved even in the um, design phase from taking a digital twin approach as early as possible. In terms of optimizing the design, you can um, streamline the construction and the commissioning, and then you can really unlock huge value in the operational phase. Well, adding to this, so it's quite common to see clients considering the digital twin at the beginning of the project. So it's very important so that this is, as I said before, clear from the beginning that you later on want to use that digital asset, that digital twin in operations. What you're seeing as well, some clients are very advanced, so they have a digital strategy. They're very prescriptive how they want to see it. Some others are not. So those who are not see the value, but don't sometimes know how to how to get through it. So that's where the oh. question comes, what can technology providers, what companies like Wood actually believe or deliver and uh, guiding them as well to say, look, how do you set up, and that's why I like your concept to say, go from right to left. So to say, look, you at the end of the day, you want to have a digital representation of your asset in operations. Let's make sure that in the engineering phase, you're taking this into account so that you later on even can do it. So I do not need to have another system integration work or another additional efforts you have to. As more as you are here, it comes again, as smarter you're doing it at the beginning, you don't need to over-design it, as easier as later on in operations. So, and therefore you need to go from the back end. I like the concept where you said you go from the right to the left. Fantastic. Um, do either of you have any closing remarks to share with the audience further? I suppose I would say, and this is maybe a slightly broader scope, but industry is going through and has been through a digital transformation and digital twin is a key part of that. But where we're going next is an autonomous transformation in terms of in unlocking more value and more um, basically improving the efficiency of assets and, and so on and so forth. And a digital twin is going to be key for that phase as well. So yeah, from our side, so we're seeing it Digital twin, people have talked a lot about it. In the past, it was just like say, oh, we have a 3D model or we have intelligent P90s, that's a digital twin. That's not a digital twin, that's just a deliverable. So it's mm -hmm. still artifacts. We're talking about digital twin, it's just like a living thing. So it's a digital representation of the asset deep down into how it's been operating, how you have designed it. And you're just not handing it over, remembering the past when everything was paper-based, you gave tons of paper over. So now, of course, you're giving a big database, but that is doing, doing anything if you don't have a digital strategy here. So that's what's coming. A digital twin is only really worse and gets full benefit when you have a digital strategy. And then you can get significant benefits in the engineering cycle and later on in the operation cycle. But it is a living thing. It needs constant nurturing, so like every of these items. So you need to be clear from day one you have changes in your asset, you have changes in your operations. You need to have the business processes in place to keep that thing up and alive. So otherwise you don't get the value you want. Keeping in mind, you have to live 50 years with the asset. That doesn't mean you have to use 50 years of technology later on, but you need to have a pass to maintain it. So and then you can do wonders with it. Well, thank you both for taking the time today to chat to us at Adipec. Uh, we really appreciate it. Um, and that brings us to the close of this insight from Adipec 2022, where we explored unlocking asset data through digital twins to transform major projects and deliver lasting value. Uh, Wood will be continuing this discussion at the Aviva World 2022 in San Francisco, um, presenting on the topic of digital twins.
Thank I you will. So much. And we're looking forward to see you there. So thank, thank you, you so much. It was an absolute thank pleasure. You. Thank you. Thank you.